So if you'd like to stand, if you're able to stand, please stand and join us as we sing The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free.
one that may be triggering a poor doggy at the front of the church, but well done to see you on. Welcome everyone and please take a seat. And it's great to see so many of you here on this fabulous morning and this great day when we formally welcome Coco into the family of God. Of course she's a regular visitor to St Mark's and joins in with a lot of the services here. My name is Jane and I'm one of the vocal ministers. Uh, and I'm here to lead you into the service. Uh, we have with us today the Reverend Sam Elmore, who uh, is multitasking, he plays, and he'll be doing the actual baptism bit um, today. Nikki, our Children and Families Minister, will take over the Commission and Prayers, and Jill's playing, and Alice is pressing buttons, and we've got people making tea and coffee. You'll see as we go along. Hopefully everything you need will be on the screens. Uh, as a rule, where the words are in yellow, you or some of you will join in. We normally sit for most of the speaking bits and stand up for the singing, but you know, if the spirit moves you to kneel down, sway from side to side or dance, we've got room down there if you want to have a, a real good boogie to the, uh, to the tunes, please feel free. If anyone needs a toilet, it's through the kitchen in the corner. Can you please make sure your mobile phones are either turned off or on silent? And if you do get an urgent call, please go outside to take it. I've just realised I've not turned my mobile phone off, so hopefully no one's going to vote. You can take photographs throughout, as long as you don't go full on daily mail um, paparazzi. And finally, we know it's difficult to sit still and keep quiet for a long time. So we'll try not to keep it long. And if you don't want to sit still and keep quiet, that's fine. Um, we've got some toys and colouring bits down there. We've got toys and colouring books up, bits up there. And it's not just the kids. Um, we've got two rules, two important rules for children. At the marks, we don't tell them to sit down and we don't tell them to shut up, just let them be at home. So, we do say a very special welcome to Coco. And of course, today she's accompanied by Lucy, her mom, and godparents, and family, and friends, and all sorts of people, and sisters, and her brother's on holiday today, but we'll forgive him once for, for that. And hopefully he'll be able to uh, see it either with, with live streaming today. So if you want to make a nuisance of yourself, uh, anybody on the, on the internet can see. And we will be recording it so they can watch it later. So here at St Mark's, the baptism or christening service is an informal one. Although, of course, there's also a deeper side. Coco's mom, godparents, family and all supporters will be making very serious promises on her behalf. And they're going to need your support as well as she grows up. And today she's joining a whole worldwide com community. So as you pray for her, picture her with yourself and the whole church throughout the whole world and throughout the ages, journeying into the fullness of God's love. So let's start with a few prayers. Be prepared to be excited and then to be ready to dream dreams and share hopes. Be willing to welcome others. Be excited to be challenged. Let us enable ourselves to receive God's spirit afresh. God of Pentecost, come to us today and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Teach us to see the new things you are doing in us. Help us to embrace the changes and challenges you ask for. 
as we look for the coming of your kingdom. Amen. Our Lord Christ Jesus has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the spirit, and he's given us baptism as the sign and seal of a new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to the fullness of life. One of the signs that we will see in this baptism service is Jesus is the light of the world. I'm going to ask Lucy now to come up and light the baptism candle. How that feels. In baptism, God calls us out of the darkness into his marvellous light. And that's just a tiny little light, a tiny little flame. But it does show us that God has light, you would be able to see that tiny little flame in the darkness a long way away. So today is a very special Sunday. Happy birthday everyone. It's the birthday of the church. We call it Pentecost, and one of the big signs of Pentecost is fire. So it's a very special candle this morning. And I'll talk more about that later. The powerful God, we hear so many languages around us. We meet people with such very different lives from our own. But your spirit transcends our languages and our differences. It calls us out to worship you. With the blessing of your spirit, we can be one with all. Going forward in your power, serving you as you deserve. Fire is such a huge power, such a powerful power. The collect, which is a prayer that we say at all Christian baptisms. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And then the special prayer, call it for Pentecost. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the bread of love and renew the face of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to get up and have another bit of a boogie. You've got instruments scattered around, so please use them if you, if you want to, but I encourage you to. And Sam's going, and Jill are going to lead us in step by step on and on.
and we're going to have a story from the Bible, but we're not going to read it. Um, there'll be a film on screen, and when when the people on there say hello, I want you to answer. Hello. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. Yeah. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Yeah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey all you! Listen carefully all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt and they asked, brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy, all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So as I said before, some call Pentecost the birthday of the church, and I think that film showed why. It was the start of all this, or you sitting here in this building, all the people across the world in churches on a Sunday morning and through the week, of course. And it was around 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, there were just 12 people, Jesus' friends to start with. They'd each gathered some more friends around them, told them what a great chap Jesus had been, prayed with them, and those friends had joined their group. And there they were, in the busy, bustling city of Jerusalem. Merchants and travellers from all different areas and countries crowded in there, bartering, chatting, arguing in their different languages. 
and all these different people. So here's the bit from the reading from the Bible that we would normally have, but I can't pronounce them all. But all these people from all these different places in all these different languages. And then, with this great big spectacular wolf. Actually, it always looks like a bit of a gentle flame in the video. And, and a bit of a, a little bit of wind. So a few bubbles. show it in paintings and, and films and things, it always looks a bit gentle. But people came running, so really I think it looked a bit more like this. this will work. Now, that's the sort of thing that would have brought all these people running. Oh, bloody neck, they would have said in their different languages. What in the name of Jericho was that? And they were even more surprised that they could hear these scruffy oiks who'd been making themselves scarce and hiding away since all that bother a few weeks ago when that preacher chap was there. That's Coco's review of my sermon. <laughs> well now, here they were. They were shouting praises and making themselves understood by all the different merchants and leaders, no matter what their native language. In the early uh, Old Testament scriptures, in Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, there's a story that all the people of the world spoke one language to start with. And they started to build a great city with enormous power reaching up to heaven. And God saw that they were relying on their own cleverness. And so he destroyed the city and the tower and scattered the people and made them speak in different languages so they couldn't get together and understand each other and work together. Now a chap called John Stott, he was a famous preacher and writer, he suggested that this Pentecost experience that happened to the friends of Jesus, it brought people back together to understand each other's language. And I think, I tend to agree. So all these explosions happened. These people have come running out. People have come running towards them. And this big chap, Peter, he jumped up. Now, Peter had been really keeping his head down since his mate Jesus had been arrested and executed. He'd even lied to people about knowing Jesus. Peter was scared that something would happen to him. And so he denied knowing anything about it at first. But now, here he is. He's the first to stand up and tell people. He told them, Jesus of Nazareth, my best mate, he was the most amazing, the most fabulous, the most awesome bloke that ever lived. He taught us to live in the best way, to love God and to love each other. No longer afraid, Peter told people about Jesus. For the last 10 days, uh, in this church, we've been praying. We've each been praying for five people who don't yet know the good news of Jesus. 
Now we need to start praying that God gives us the opportunities to speak to those five people about Jesus, to tell them why we think he's the most amazing, fabulous, awesome bloke who ever lived. We don't have to stand up and talk to crowds of people. We just need to stand up and talk to those five to start with. We don't need to do it all together. We don't have to get them all together for a meeting. I know how difficult that can be. But just meet them one to one over a cup of coffee or a pint. What stops us from being afraid to talk to people about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Well, I think it's got something to do with that fire explosion in the first place. As Christians, we've got a tiny spark, a tiny glow of love and knowledge of God in our hearts. Like the disciples did in that building so many years ago, they had little lights in their hearts, a little glow that warmed them. They could have been perfectly happy living with their own little glow, the happiness that they had known Jesus, they had known the good news, and they could have kept it to themselves. But what God did to those disciples in that room, he created a backdraft. He breathed into that room the life-giving breath of love and hope and faith, like a huge inlet of life-giving oxygen that caught hold of those little sparks and made them explode into life. There's no way the people in that room could hold in that explosion. They had to rush out and start telling people about the love, the peace, the hope of God. They didn't just do it on that day and in that place. They travelled round for the rest of their lives and told people in different countries. They couldn't help themselves. They couldn't keep it to themselves. That good news exploded, exploded out of them. And we as God's people in this place and at this time, we should let the news explode from us too. Perhaps not in such a spectacular way, although it might, you never know. Because now, in these days, looking at the news of hurt and conflict and fighting and division between people, the news of God's love and hope and peace needs to be shared. If you've been praying for five people, then don't stop. Don't stop at the end of these 10 days of prayer. Keep praying. And if you think of other people who don't yet know God, pray for them too. God's love is everlasting and infinite. So there's enough good news to go around. Now you might forget what I said in this morning's sermon. You might have already forgotten it. Even I forget what I've preached sometimes in some sermons. But I'd like to help you to remember to pray and to share. In a little while during prayer time, Nikki's going to ask you to each to come out to the front to bring something. And as you each go back to your seat, I want you to take one of the little red flames from the fuzzy belt picture here. Put it into your wallet or your purse or your handbag. I'll give you a word of advice though. Don't put it into your pocket. <laughs> At my daughter's christening, each person was given a seed. My husband put his into his new shirt pocket and forgot about it. And when we washed the shirt, the seed got squashed and stained it and it never washed out. So anyway, put the flame into your purse or your wallet. And then when you come across it at a later time, let it remind you of God's love. And let it feed life-giving oxygen into your own personal spark. And pray that you're given the courage 
and the word to spread the fire and to build the kingdom of God. Amen. So I think you've sat for long enough. To get the musicians to spring into action. And we're going to sing a song that you might not recognise the words of, but you will most definitely recognise the tune. So sing as loud as you can and play your instruments as we sing, Bless this water, bless this child. the baptism part of our service. We've got some people ready to help us to spring into action with me. Everything that you need will be on the words um, on the screen. Anything in a, a deeper or, or bolder print, you're invited to say along with me, but I'll guide you as we go. And we'll be looking out for three signs. For those of you who are young or young at heart like to look out for things as we go with there's three signs we celebrate in our baptism service. Because as that reading is set us up for well, thinking about Joel and the Old Testament and the birth of the church and everything that that's spelled out for us, we are celebrating everything that God has done in our lives, everything that God is doing in this moment, and everything that God plans to do with us and for us for the future. 
My formal introduction, faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Coco Valentina and uphold her in her new life in Christ? With the help of God, you will. These next few questions are directed to parents, godparents and sponsors, so you might find it helpful if you stand in place, if you feel able, and respond to the words on the, with the words on the screen. Parents, godparents, sponsors, the church receives Coco with joy. Today we are trusting God for their growth in faith, so will you pray for them? Draw them by your example into the community of faith and walk with them on their way of, in the way of Christ. With their help of God, we will. In baptism, Coco begins her journey in faith. Do you speak for her today? Will you care for her? Help her to take a place within the life and worship of Christ's church. With the help of God, we will. We all wander far from God and lose our way, and Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call, and therefore, I ask parents, godparents and sponsors of this child, do you turn away from sin? Do you reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you trust in him as Lord? So we're now going to see the first of our signs, the sign of the cross. So I'm going to invite parents, godparents and sponsors to gather around the font with me for the first time. Coco, you'll need to come up for this bit as well. Coco, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. <laughs> Do not be ashamed of Christ, you are his forever. We all say together, stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. So you can all take a seat again for a moment. We need to prepare the water for our baptism. So regular visitors to St Mark's will know that I need extra help for this bit. I need a special volunteer, and I'd love for that volunteer to be called Rosie today. That's how I'm feeling. So is there somebody called Rosie in the church this morning? Oh, that's lucky. I did worry for a second there. So first we're going to just, I need help because it's, an, it's a heavy jug and I've only got little arms. So we're going to pour the water in together. And we'll pray as we pour the water in. Heavenly Father, bless this water, that whoever is washed in it may be made one with Christ in the fellowship of your church and be brought through every tribulation to share the risen life that is ours in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. But before we go anywhere, we also need to remind everybody of their baptism. You see, when we have a baptism service, don't worry, I won't, I won't go on too long. <laughs> when we have a baptism, we're celebrating Coco's journey and Coco's moment, but we're also reminding everybody that they're beloved children of God, and they're all on a journey. So we're going to check the water's not too warm. Just give it a little stir with me. Give it a little stir. And then if you take this side and I take this side, Shall we remind them that they're chosen children of God? There's so many things in my way. So I'm going to start with this side. There's already somebody in a swimming posse over this side, so they knew I was coming. So beloved chosen children of God, on this side of the room, I invite you to remember your baptism. <laughs> Are you using a child as a body shield? That doesn't feel appropriate. Would you like to remind this guy, this guy? <laughs> Chosen children of God, remember your baptism. Big splash. Oh. <laughs> well done, give her a round of applause. Thank you. Lovely.
Um, so as I was saying, we're reminding ourselves that we're all on a journey, and so we're going to profess our faith together. So with the responding to, with the words in bold and yellow on the screen, let us affirm together with Coco to be baptised today our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to invite Coco, parents, God, parents, and sponsors to gather around the font with me for the baptism. Someone's going to help you with this one. What name have you given to this child? Coco Valentina. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Oh dear. <laughs> Coco, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I think I've improved your hair, didn't you? <laughs> Coco, by one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. Let's say it together. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Give them a round of applause. So I invite you to take your seats again as Nikki comes to lead us in prayer and for the commission. I like the fact that Coco got you back for it, getting her wet before. <laughs> well done, Coco. Well done, Summer. Um, in a moment, you're going to need a little heart shaped piece of card and something to write with. They were spread around on all the chairs when you arrived, so if you'd like to make sure you can find one. Um, there's plenty of spares and we do have some others, so if you've not got one, just wave your hand. But hopefully we're all okay, lovely. So just hold on to those and I'll explain what we're doing in a moment. First, the commission. Faithful and loving God, bless those who care for Coco. Grant them your gifts of love, wisdom and faith. Pour upon Coco your healing and reconciling love and protect her from all evil. Fill her with the light of your presence and establish her in the joy of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So these hearts are for you to write your own prayer for Coco. You might like to write it in the form of a prayer, but you could write it as hopes or dreams for Coco as she grows into a young lady. And we're going to just ask God to inspire and to bless these prayers. So just in the next couple of minutes, write your prayers. And then I'm going to pop a little box on the, just on the font there, and I'd love to invite you to come up and pop those prayers into the box. And then Lucy can go home with Lucy, and you can pray them over her, you can show her as she's older, and just something to keep as our blessings from this service. So a couple of minutes to write your prayers, and then bring them up when you're ready. Father, I pray unto you. 
together and love and support Coco. Together we pray for your blessing to be upon Coco's life. We ask for help, joy and a sense of belonging and being loved. And above all, that she will grow to know that she is loved by you and can have a relationship with you. Amen. And I going to invite Jane to come and continue. This is the time when we pray for the rest of the world. Um, and I've got a helper today who's going to come up. And read these prayers for us. Heavenly Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide and fire up the people of your church today. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are among us, the poor of the world, and in war-torn nations where lives have been turned upside down. May the Holy Spirit guide and encourage them. We pray for those in this country who volunteer with food banks and other charities. May they inspire others to learn more about Jesus and your vision for the world and following his footsteps. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be those who are in need of relief from fear, sadness and loneliness. Please help us to know when a kind word or deed from us might make a difference to someone's day. We pray for those who work in the NHS and other caring services, for our teachers, sport coaches, youth leaders, our families and all those who care for us. Heavenly Father, help us to dream big dreams in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that we will be inspired to work towards those dreams and build the world that you have planned for us. Help us to reflect your light as bright as the northern light into the dark corners of our world and to share your love and care to those who don't know you yet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you. So let's bring all these prayers together in the prayer that these support us. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our 
nothing, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And it's a party, so we have some presents. This Christmas we give a gift of the candle just to remind Coco and her family of that small spark that will grow with the love of Jesus. So I like to come on a little book of Bible stories um, that you can read to her, or she'll be able to read herself. And perhaps you'd like to you know, keep the candle and light it on the anniversary of this day. So God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Coco, you and we have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> right, so it wouldn't be church if we didn't have notices. So um, I just... I think most church members have at least had a uh, sight of a uh, green notice sheet. Um, I'd just like to highlight a couple of things. On the 8th of June, Saturday the 8th of June, between 10 o'clock and 12 noon in the church hall, we're going to have a coffee morning, and it's in aid of two organisations that we work with. One is Save Families, and one is S and 4 C's. Uh, it's the Sheffield Churches Council for Care or something. I can never remember what the 4 C's stand for. Um, but uh, our oversight minister says it's the same as Save Families. He calls it Save Pensioners. Uh, if you'd like to help out the coffee morning, there's a sign-up sheet on the refreshment table. Um, if you can bake or give a raffle prize or help on a stall, uh, or help is gratefully acknowledged. Also, uh, on Gala Day, which is the week after uh, that, we're going to have a stall outside. We normally open church anyway. Church will be open for people to come in and have refreshments. But we're also having a stall outside in the community, uh, as long as it doesn't rain. And we're going to be selling fair trade um, goods. And I can vouch for their chocolate being absolutely amazing. So if anybody it would be able to help uh, sell stuff on the fair trade store as well that day, um, there's another sign up sheet. So we're wanting lots and lots of volunteers. Is there any other notice? I have the most important notice here. It's my absolute pleasure to publish the bands of marriage between 
Ryan Lee Morton and Sarah Victoria Oldham, both single and from this parish. And this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Silence is a good sign. So let's pray for Ryan and for Sarah as they prepare for their wedding. Lord of love, we pray for Ryan and for Sarah. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them the protection of your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right, before we come to the final blessing and song, I'd like to thank you all again for being here to support Lucy and, and her lovely family. If you'd like to join us again, we have a service here every week at 10 o'clock and there are groups for children on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings and Messy Church most months. We do have groups for adults as well, so please keep your eye on the web pages for updates. Uh, we don't take a collection during our services, but if you would like to donate towards the work of the church here in Grenoside and the wider area, as well as the charities that we support as a church, there's a plate uh, by the sound desk at the back. Anyone who has been touched by anything in this service or wants to know more or wants to light a candle, uh, in memory of someone or anyone that's going through anything that's hanging heavily around their hearts and could do with a word or a prayer there will be someone uh, to be there for them uh, by the altar after the service i invite you all to please stay for drink and some of the most amazing cakes i have seen on that table um, so I'm sure we need to make a, a big hole in them. Otherwise, Lucy will have to take them home, eat them all herself, and then she'll be sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, our final blessing. Thank you, God, for making us all different, all special, and all loved. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to help us to love other people. Give us joy as we hope and dream about the future. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. So let's go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And let's sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> He's got the whole Everybody here, in this house we got 
God bless you all. Please do get some uh, tea and coffee and cake. <laughs>